Yo, what is up, guys? Matt Wick here, and it's back. I'm finally here. The playoffs, er, play, <laughs> playoffs, hockey's over. I'm back. We're going to do some testing the draft. We're getting about that time where we're going to hear some NHL 20 news. So I figured I would uh, pop back up out of nowhere. Posted a couple videos, just getting audio levels. Hopefully it's good for this one, even though there's no game sound. Um, first things first, congratulations to the San Jose Sharks, Stanley Cup champions, as you can see there. Uh, but no, your year's next year, guys. Don't worry about it. Uh, but no, congratulations to St. Louis Blues. What a playoff run by them. Been nasty. Uh, unbelievable. Setting records. Uh, first Stanley Cup for that franchise. It was so much fun to watch to follow it through. But not only that, it was an incredible playoffs in general, starting with Tampa Bay getting swept. Uh, Penguins getting swept wasn't very fun for me. It was pretty disappointing. Um, but it didn't turn me off of the playoffs. The rest of it was unreal. Carolina's run was really fun. Bunch of jerks. I still need to find one of those t-shirts. I really want to get one. Um, and then Colorado's run on the other side was insane. The Vegas San Jose series, um, Dallas's little run was pretty nice. Calgary getting bounced in that first by Colorado was pretty funny. Um, but it was really fun all the way around and it got a good ending, uh, saved us from the, uh, the torment of Boston winning a cup. So thank God we don't get to see that. Instead, we just get those beautiful, uh, Brad Marchand dancing on a, uh, what was that nightclub or whatever with his shirt off dude has nice traps i will say that but what a goofball what a goofball um on other news as well the pittsburgh penguins making a big trade no uh, yeah yeah big trade we've it's been a guy that the uh, pens have been shopping around or fans have been wanting him shopped around for a while i was always a mod fan um i still would have liked to give him a chance but what they got in return in my mind or in my eyes i guess i should say is good enough for me uh, that Cahoon looks like a nice little player. I don't know if any Blackhawks fans in the uh, comments can let me know their thoughts on him. But just uh, looking at his stats from the season, I mean, 82 games played. He uh, had 13 goals, over 30 points, and six penalty minutes in those 82 games with a plus 10 on a somewhat struggling Blackhawks team. Um, but a team that they, they started picking it up towards the end of the season, I would say they started to get a little bit better. Um, Mata, I think he'll be good with the Blackhawks. Um He's a guy who needs kind of a fresh start, so excited to see what he can do there. But other than that, uh, Blackhawks fans, like I said, let me know what you think of, uh, I think it's, it's pronounced Cahoon. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. He's listed as a center, but I've heard that he can also play some forward roles, which I think that's where he'd be as the Penguin with the Penguins, because I don't see him as a third-line center. Um, I feel like he'd, he'd be wasted there, but I mean, he would be a solid, solid guy, so we'll see where that goes, but... The moment you've all been waiting for so, so very long. I don't know when the last time I posted a video was, but it's been a while. Um, we're back. NHL entry draft. Testing the draft. Probably, uh, like I said, probably not too long before we see from NHL 20. I have no idea what they're going to do with the game to make it different. Um, I mean, as always, I'd like faster menus. Um, I mean, first things first. Can we get the fucking all-star game in the season, please? <laughs> that would be really nice. Um... Other than that, I mean, you guys can let me know in the comments what you think some upgrades are, but I mean, I haven't really been thinking about it too much. A lot has been going on uh, in my life, which uh, has been part of the reason why I haven't posted too many videos, but enough about all that. Let's take a look at this draft, and it's actually a really good one to come back on, I feel like, uh, so we're going to go ahead. Let's view this draft class. First thing we're going to see, so we, uh, the, the Idaho chefs, do have the second overall pick. I would have loved to have the first to be able to get this guy, uh, Maurice Maurice Levesque, I guess is how you would say. He's so far away, the number one, that there's not even a number two. Um, but his uh, his skill assessment looks really good compared to the number two guy. Um, so he's going to come out as a stud. No weaknesses. Now, I know uh, uh, Lafre Lafreniere doesn't either, but I'm excited to have him on this team. Uh, he's, he's a good little good little player. I think he comes out as like a 79 at least he does in most GM mode, so we'll see. But I'm excited to see what this guy's going to be about. But the thing that makes this draft very interesting is once I hit this little sort button here, it's going to be these two guys. So we have two, not one, but two medium franchise goalies, supposedly fully scouted. I don't know if I'll trust these scouts too much, but normally if they say uh, uh, full bars, it's, it's normally right. Um, the guy, now I thought about this a little bit before I started to record of who I'd want to take. So we do have the 33rd overall pick in the draft, which would be right around where this guy, Serrata, is going to go. Six foot, 187, 17 years old. So he's going to be a prospect. If you look in here, the one thing that worries me, he's got no strengths. So that means he's going to come out like the lowest overall possible. 
he's going to be he's going to need that extra year to hopefully catch up on everything that he's lacking in. So he's got the potential, but is he going to pan out in the future? I've had guys before where they're 17, 49 overalls, medium franchise, never get there. The highest they would get is like 78, 77. I had one guy get to an 81 as a franchise goalie by the time he was 26. Uh, so disappointing. Whereas this guy, Mikel Lander, um, strengths are leadership, work ethic, and maturity. Now that work ethic, it would have been interesting if I would have been actually posting videos this whole time because we would have known by now if a guy has a strength in work ethic, does that maybe mean he gets a little bit of a faster development trait? That'd be something interesting to maybe if it's not the case to be the case for NHL 20. Um, obviously weaknesses are his, uh, are his skills. Now he does have a little bit better skill assessment than the other guy, than Serrata. Um, also his personality, fantastic leader, pro mentality, cares about winning and seems very loyal. So that leads me to believe he's going to have a high poise possibly, which is a big stat in my eyes for a goaltender. If they have low poise, they're very susceptible to giving up those two goal leads in the playoffs. And it's very frustrating to watch if you do those Sims and your goalie has a two goal cushion and fucking blows it because he has no poise and he can't, and he's a mental midget as uh, biz nasty would say he's a mental midget. Um, whereas this guy would mesh well in a locker room, has a very well-rounded personality. So nothing really special with him. So I think once we get to that second pick, it's going to be Mikael Lander. And then after that, we'll kind of go from there. I've done the uh, done the scouting. A um, lot of good prospects in this draft. We'll see uh, see where we go with some of these picks, see who's available at certain spots. we got a couple gems, but I don't know if we'll get a chance to go for them. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's get into it. Make our first pick, which is going to be uh, Laf Lafreniere. I'll, fi I'll figure out how to, how, to say, how to say it right because uh, he's a real player. So I'll get to that. But Vegas has the first overall pick. So they're going to get a little bit more loaded up. I don't know what their team's looking like, but if they're uh, that bad. And I think I'm going to assume that's their pick. Let's see if it's their pick or if it's uh, somebody else's. First overall, is it from? I, I guess it wouldn't say from somebody. Oh, yeah, it would say if it's there. So, yeah, that is their first overall pick. So they were that bad. Yikes. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's exit here. We have a first round pick, a second round pick. I, we don't have our third for whatever reason. This is an old GM mode that I had. Um, I haven't touched it for a while. Um, so we don't have our third. I don't know why, but then we have picks after that. Uh, I think we have two sevenths and then we have every other round. So let's go ahead. Sim options. See what our boy here at the first pick is going to be like. Yep, high elite, 80 overall, very nice little player here. Uh, shooting category, not bad. What did he come out? Center playmaker, I mean, that's a nice nice little uh, setup there. Quick guy, he'll probably have 99 speed by the time he's uh, 20 years old. And he's only 17 years old too, which is really nice. He gets that extra year development, which my guy Lafreniere, Lafreniere, <laughs> this is going to be bad. I forgot the fucking main draw of this uh, series was how I pronounce these guys' names. Lafreniere, Laf La Lafreniere, I don't know, Lafreniere, 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 <laughs> Alexis, Alexi, <laughs> I, fuck, I can't even do his first name, uh, let's go ahead and grab him though, I was thinking about a defenseman, but they're all defensive defensemen, um, one thing as well, I'll show it maybe uh, after I finish the draft is something if not a lot of people know about, um, with some players, I do it all the time. Every time I start a series up, I go in free agency, sign Dominic Simone because he's a solid winger, but he's listed as a center. Um, whenever I do these drafts now, uh, if a guy drafted as a center has 60 overall faceoffs, he's not a center. I go into the edit player, change his position. It's something that you can do. They don't black gray it out, black it out. Um, you can change his like play style as well, which I do a lot with defensive defensemen. Like Brian Dumlin's not a defensive defenseman. So in this GM, I went in and edited him, made him a two-way D-man because uh, he's not like a strictly, in my eyes, a stay-at-home D-man. He's very solid defensively, but he's not a defensive defenseman. Um, so that's definitely something with these picks. If you see a guy who's a defensive defenseman listed, but he has like 90s in his shooting, go change him to offensive defenseman because he will light it the fuck up as opposed to a defensive defenseman where he'll maybe score five goals in a season. So just something to think about there. If you guys didn't know about that, definitely uh, go in there, edit those players, make them your own and make them fit your system. Let's go ahead. We're going to take our boy here, make that selection. I've rambled on long enough. 76 overall. He'll probably be an 80 by the time the season starts. High elite, too. I don't normally see him come out as a high elite, I think. I think he's normally medium. So that's pretty cool. Um, see, 70 overall faceoff. If he was a center, I would switch him off of a center 
uh, position. Discipline is an 88 already. That's really nice. Just get that poise up there. My guy shooting is pretty good. He's a playmaker as well. We'll see if I want to keep him as that with that shooting stats that he has. Um, he might be a nice little uh, nice little sniper, but we'll see. We'll see what we got on our team. Let's go ahead and see what the third pick's going to be. It's going to be one of those defensemen. Uh, medium elite, 77 overall. Uh, I still like our pick more. 78 overall. This was a guy who was uh, also projected to be the third overall pick with our boy Alexis. Alexi. Um, solid. Uh, he's a defensive defenseman, that's for sure. Uh, so let's go ahead and sim the next pick. See, we got another medium elite. So we're going uh, top five picks or studs in this draft. Let's see if we got the next one. Another medium elite, six in a row. Uh, and that's a lot of defensemen. This is a very uh, defenseman-heavy draft. Let's see, can we make it seven? Uh, no, uh, an offensive defenseman, Paka Schlotty, uh for the Ottawa Centers. They fuck it all up. What about Edmonton? They're probably going to mess it up too. Yep, ooh, 65 overall. That overall drop was hard. Uh, we'll go ahead to the top 10, Zagrapan, very nice. I did go through two, no uh, really uh, impressive names. There was a lot of uh, a lot of brother combinations, though. There was the uh, Morozov tri uh, twins, uh, triplets, actually. Uh, there were three of them, all from, like, uh, Kazakhstan, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to go to the second round, sim to our pick. Oh, we actually should have had the first. Damn, how high did fucking Vegas jump? Wait, okay, so they didn't have a second pick. I was about to shit my pants, guys. Okay, they had the second, um, I guess. <laughs> shit, that's crazy, though. Uh, so this is where we're going to take that defenseman. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, we'll save our time out. We just have a couple picks to look at here. Let's see if there's anything interesting in this first round. We'll skip through uh, after the 10th. Medium elite there. Not bad. 63 overall, though, so he's going to take a while to develop. Um, Bohinsky, I like that name. Uh, what's his, what's this guy's name? Walker David. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty good Boston guy. I like that. Uh, Liam Bang. I think he's been in there before. Um, a couple low elites there. I'm looking at overalls more just to see if there's anything impressive, but not really. Let's go ahead. Steal of the draft right here, boys. We're going to go ahead and switch it up. Oh, who's this Bolt guy? Craig Bolt. Um, but no, we're not taking Solomon Serrata. We'll see what he uh, comes out to. Also, I like that the other guy is a butterfly goal. I see like you. I feel like you see a lot of hybrid guys, not so many uh, butterflies. I don't know. That's just me. Like you see here, a lot of hybrids uh, are these elite type goalies. So it's cool to see a butterfly guy. So he's a little different. Big size, two six three two zero three. Eighteen years of age. Um, yeah, let's see what he is. I just have a feeling he's gonna be better if he doesn't come out to be a medium uh, franchise. I'm gonna cry. <gasps> Ooh, okay, 53 overall. Um, that's not bad. I mean, the other guy's probably going to come out to be a 49 overall. That's just impressive that he is a uh, medium franchise, um, and he's a super Swede. Um, now, if this was a GM mode where I was actually trying to, uh, like, actually, like, do it instead of just sim through and do drafts, I would probably cheese it. Ah, man, yeah, I'd probably cheese it and trade for, uh, trade for a second-round pick so I could take both of them and then use one as trade bait down the road. Um, cause I mean, how often does that happen? You can go through like four or five years and not see one franchise potential player. And in this draft, we have two franchise potential goalies, um, too good to pass up. Let's go ahead and sim picks until that other goalie gets taken. Cause it should be somewhere in the next couple picks, I would assume. So we'll see. Um, hopefully someone, uh, let's see who takes him. That's gonna be interesting. What was that guy? Low elite. That was the bolt guy. Another low elite graps, bolt graps. What's this guy's name? Christopher. Christopher Graps. I like it. Uh oh, Vancouver. Uh oh, we're getting into that, that goalie pick. Where is he going to go? Christensen, nice little low elite. Oh, the Capitals. Please don't tell me they get him. Oh, they do. But yeah, 48 overall. He comes out as the lowest possible overall. Um, stats exactly as you expect. Half stars. Um, so we'll see. What was his so poise? 66. I just want to compare the poise to my guy's poise. So 66. I'm just seeing any other. Stats that would be maybe with that maturity at all. Not really. So 66. Let's see what our guy was. Um, Poise 68. So not a huge difference. Um, one star, one star, two stars though. So I mean this is going to be something we can follow for the next couple of videos. Is year after year maybe go back and check on these guys. Durability 78 as well. Speed 76. Uh, what was his vision to? Vision was 67. So obviously he's going to be a little bit better. He's a year older. Um, that's interesting now that the Caps got him. So they are set up. 
um, for down the road. So uh, definitely something to look at. We got two second round of medium franchise goalies taken there. So let's go ahead. We'll sim to our user pick and then I will call a timeout so we can take a look at what happened in the third round. Did Vegas have a pick this round? Damn, it's like they have every other pick. Unless, no, no, they didn't have a pick that round. Let's see what happened in the third round, though. Top six, top six, nothing too crazy. Trying to look at both overalls and potentials. Well, it looks like it fell off pretty good. Nice little medium starter goaltender there. Not as good as the franchise boys, but, you know, whatever. I guess they'll uh, they'll take their shot at it. Um, Beck, what's this guy's name? Isaac Beck. Thought it'd be cooler than that. Um, so yeah, nothing crazy. Try not to miss anything. I'm sure I'll see something in the comments saying, oh, you missed a, uh, you missed this stud tier player that got taken. But let's go ahead, see what we're going to take with our third pick. We have a nice little finished player sitting there. I want to see, do we have any gems left? Because I think there were about four gems in this draft. There's one left that is a goalie. <laughs> Sucks. Um, Chuck Fisher. Ah, uh, <laughs> I've never really seen an E God, that's bad. <laughs> Medium starter. I don't understand why the gem. I guess we'll look and see if when this guy gets taken. Hopefully, I don't miss it. But we'll see uh, if we can keep an eye out for that. We got a couple for sure. Um, we have another goalie there. A couple for sure uh, low elites um, for the 132nd ranked pick. Um, let's see. Is there anybody more in our wheelhouse of where we're picking that looks solid? Um, Timofey Kurulik. I haven't, I haven't seen a name like that in, in, in this so far. Um, pretty much what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go look at the skill assessment and see if anybody like jumps off the page at me. Any A's in there is what we're looking for because that normally means they got a higher overall. A couple of B's with that guy wasn't well scouted. The other guy had a lot of, a lot of B minuses. Um... See, nothing crazy, and I'm wondering if I want to take a shot at one of those low elites um, to try to reach for him. Because I'm not really seeing anybody special here, so it's probably all low overalls. Let's go back and look at those low elites. 132 defensemen. So we got two defensemen who are for sure low elites. We could take a risk on somebody else. Uh, 6'4", 19 years old. 6'1", 18 years old. Um, what am I looking for here? Elite, low elite, no. Hmm, takes winning seriously. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Where did this come from? Rudolph Hilpert. Is this one of the low elite guys? Shit, okay, okay. 19 years old, too. I mean, one year older than most of these guys, but let's go ahead and take him. Shit, that was nice. 71 overall, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely look at those skill assessments. Shot ball hugging's an 89. This guy's going to be a stud. Um, I don't like defensive defensemen just because of how their stats come out, so I'll probably switch him to a two way guy. But holy shit, this guy's a stud. He's got decent puck skills for being 19 years old out of the draft. I mean, other than that, yeah, strength's nice. He can, he's going to be playing in the AHL day one. Um, so that's a nice little pick there. Let's see who goes after him. Uh, high bottom six. Eh, I mean, he might develop quickly, but 55 overall, it's going to take still a couple of years. Um, so let's see. Damn, 71 overall in this round. That is a nice pick. See, look at those skill assessment, guys. That's going to show you uh, show you what you need to know. Let's go ahead and sim to the next pick, see what we got. Go back through round four. Anything interesting here? Top six forwards. Sprucks. Sprucks. Gets taken there. Um, nothing else really too crazy. A couple top six Ds. I'm trying to look at overalls too. Probably missing something. Medium top nine. Oh, there's the other uh, low elite guy with Tampa Bay. Fuck. Um, definitely not as good as our guy, so I'm very happy with our pick. Uh, not as well developed, so that's a good, good little pick by us. There's one of the uh, elite goalies, medium elite Raphael Fanouf. Um, pretty solid. Uh, like 48 overall, so, I mean, he's going to be right with there with the uh, with that franchise goalie. But let's go ahead and see who is available for our pick 129th. Oh, this Chuck Fisher's here. He's a gem. Who else is around that I'd feel confident taking? 
Gustav's Prohorkin. Actually, too, I do need goalies because my AHL goalie is Linus Allmark, and my backup this season was a uh, was a nobody that they just give you in the uh, with the expansion draft. What's this guy's name? Johnny Hooker. I like that. He's a real dude. Man, I hope he has a successful NHL career. He actually doesn't look like that bad of a pick. He might come out to be like a, what, all C's? We'd be looking mid-60s, something like that. So not terrible. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take that other goal. I'm going to take the gem. Um, don't see too many of them per draft. Maybe about four if you're lucky. So let's go ahead. Chuck Fisher, another goaltender off the board. Uh, if we can, we can use him for trade bait down the road. Ooh, 47 overall, though. How old is he? 18 as well. So he loses that 17-year-old uh, of uh, 17 year old age of uh, extra year development. So that's a bit disappointing. But like I said, hopefully we can use him as trade bait down the road. Let's go ahead and see... Anybody else get taken? I'm still, I can't remember that other, I think that was, that was the goalie I was thinking about there. So all the goalies I think that I had my eye on are all taken. Um, I'm looking here, don't really see anything. We're getting pretty deep in the draft. So the overalls are getting pretty bad and the potential just is not there. Um, yeah, so pretty disappointing. A little medium starter there at the end as well. That's not bad. Not a bad little pick by San Jose Stanley Cup champion, San Jose Sharks. Um, one thing, too, from coming from this uh, – hey, there we go, Dylan Petrangelo. Um, from this playoffs is, God damn, is Joe Pavelski a fucking warrior? Um, it's disappointing that San Jose just, I feel like, ran out of gas because they were uh, they were really pushing for Thornton to get his cup. But it's nice to see uh, Bo Meester get one. He's been a guy who's uh, a little more quiet, so you don't hear too much about him. But good to see him get a cup um, finally. And uh, Bennington, what he's gone through, uh, his story is pretty incredible. Uh, so it's nice to see him get one as well. Not really seeing anything crazy here. There's one of the uh, Mor Moraza, Jacob Moraza brothers. Um, and then there's the two guys. Uh, so if you notice here, Vesa Tuamainen. And then we go back up here to the top. His twin brother, Vesa Tuamainen, <laughs> 19 years old. Is he 19 as well? Oh, he's 17, so his parents really like that name, so they had nothing else, and they just tossed it on him. Um, let's see. Actually, is he any, did I look any, any decent? Very friendly, but keeps to himself. And him. It'd be funny if it was the same. <laughs> Very friendly, but keeps to himself. Uh, uh, I like it. Character, work ethic, maturity. Is that the same for the other guy? That's just too, much. It's too funny. Okay, so a little bit different. I, I just want to take them just for the just for the laughs of having them on the teams. Um, is there anybody else here who I would rather have? I mean, they're not for a while, so I might be able to wait next round for them and then grab the other guy in the seventh round. Yeah, we got a lot of time until they get picked. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to take Petrangelo, uh, low top six. Um, nothing really too special. Let me let me go through real quick. We got a, we got a minute. Let me see. Anybody jumping off at me? Oh, is that the uh, Johnny Hooker? Okay, Johnny Hooker is coming on the team. Um, so Johnny Hooker is the guy I'm looking at right now. I didn't look at his age, though, to see who's that. Connor Zary. Not a bad little player there. Got some good senses, which is what you always look for. Had, had a decent point total. Um, but I just like Johnny Hooker's name. And then we're going to take the twins after this. Or not the twins, but the uh, the brothers, I guess it'll be. Nothing really. If you see like a couple A's this late in the draft, that's the guy you grab. Like maybe like this guy would be a dude I would look at, especially with those point totals. He uh, looks a little solid, but 20 years of age, so not a lot of development there. So you expect those guys to be a little more, a little more uh, well-rounded than some of the younger guys. But let's go ahead. I'm gonna take Johnny Hooker. He's there. It just seems too too much, uh, too much of fate. Johnny Hooker, get on my team. Uh, probably won't ever get signed, but hey, you never know. Uh, solid little guy there, 44 penalty minutes. 85 discipline. I mean, that's a cool little stat that he has there that could help him out. Also has some good shot power. Um, decent little wheels on him, but definitely needs to work on those uh, senses with the offensive and defensive awareness. Not going to get in the NHL like that, my guy. Let's go ahead, sim to the next user pick. We're round seven. I believe I have two picks here, so I can grab those two. Brothers, yes, I can. Very nice. Let's go back through round six. Any steals here? Uh, low top six. Also, we'll look for that defenseman. Yeah, Petrangelo, 
low top six, 47 overall, so probably really won't become much of anything. Uh, 5'8", too, so a little bit of a smaller guy. Does he have wheels on him? Yeah, not really, but we'll see if he develops them. Uh, medium back up there, medium starter, 57 overall, not a bad pick. 20 years old, though, so he's got a uh, uphill battle there. Ooh, nice little pick there by Columbus, a nice little low elite. Of course, he's a Finnish guy. Uh, uh, there, what's his, what's his name? Yarmo, is that their GM's name? I can't remember, uh, but he's uh, took a little risk this year. They got a nice little playoff win, but uh, unfortunately couldn't make it past Boston. Would have been nice to see them continue that run, but good to see them get a little taste of uh, victory, keep the fans coming back. Let's go ahead, though. We'll make our pick here in the seventh round. You know who it's going to be. We'll take the uh, higher-ranked Vesa. Uh, hopefully they're still there. They should still be there. They were pretty low on this list. Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and grab him. Six foot five. Very nice. 57 overall. How old was he? He was 19, right? Yeah, 57 overall, 19 years of age. That's not too bad. He might be able to become something. He's a big guy, too. So let's go ahead and send the next user pick. And we're going to take his brother. Let's go ahead and find him. He'll be down this list a little bit. And then, what was he, center? Center and a left wing, too, so that's nice. They could play on the same line together. Um, we'll go ahead and grab his brother. Boom. And now we got a nice little line. 53 overall at 17 years of age. That's not too bad. What was this guy, 18 years old? So he's got some... Uh, because he got a chance. I would say they both have a chance. You know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe they can become solid AHL uh, staples. A nice little uh, story. Make a movie about him one day. Um, other than that, let's see. Nothing too crazy. Low top six. Low top six. 58 overall. 63 overall. 20 years old, though. Not a bad pick, though, I would say. Uh, Fasco Rudas. <laughs> I like the name. Uh, 19 years old at 60 overall. See, now I'd like that pick a little bit more. What about this guy? Michael Little, 20 years old, 48 overall goaltender. Then we got our guy. Let's go ahead, Sim Pick. And we're almost done with the first episode of the return of the draft. 61 overall there with this guy. 88 discipline. Fuck, is that just something that's just going on? 72 discipline. So my guy doesn't have fucking good discipline. What the hell? St. Louis, who are they taking? They take Hayden Fowler. A nice little, uh, nice little Canadian-born guy there. 85 discipline as well. What the fuck? And he's got good wheels and a nice little shot power. Some good durability. Too bad that doesn't matter because I turn all the uh, injuries off. Um, Morrisu gets taken there. First of Toronto's two picks. 80 overall. Ooh, 70 uh, offensive awareness. What's his overall? 61. 19 years old. That's not a bad pick either. And the final pick, mystery relevant from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Who do we got? We got a but goalie, uh, 48 overall. But there's our draft. I very much like it. We got the two uh, two boys at the very end and also uh, tossed in Hooker and a very, very solid top two pick. So I'm happy with that draft. Um, even our defensive defenseman is pretty good too. But um, before we end it, real quick, I'll show you what I mean. If you go to league, you go to edit player, you can hop in, see your roster. You can also change guys in the AHL, I believe. Hey, you can change it for anybody. I just hold on to stick to my team because these are the guys – who I'm going with. And goddamn, Bob Cohen coming out of nowhere. Third round pick from our first year. Um, low elite, I guess, wanted to jump to an 85 overall. Very cool. Uh, what did he do? He played in the AHL, I believe. Yeah, AHL, two seasons, uh, 53 points. So he got a lot better. Took a lot of shots. A uh, couple game winning goals. Power play points. I like it. So you know where he's going to be next season. But um, so if we go to a guy like him. So this, this is a perfect example of what I mean by this. Fucking puck skills are almost maxed out. His shot power is unfucking real. Discipline's great. Offensive awareness is great. Defensive stats are fucking incredible. His physical stats are great too. Only thing he's lacking is he's a slow skater, but who cares? The thing that's going to ruin this guy in the NHL, possibly, possibly. He still might have a decent NHL career, but looking at his stats in the AHL, um... And then seeing those overalls, you're like, oh, man, you, you think he may put up like 40 goals down there with a shot power of freaking 98. The reason he doesn't is because he's listed as a grinder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here, click on him. And also, I'll also give him a custom celebration that's down the road, though. He also looks like Chris Letang. So we're going to go here. Grinder. 98 shot power. Fuck no, he's no grinder. This guy's a goddamn sniper, and he's going to play like it. And he's also jersey numbers 81. So he's the next Phil Castle, Bob Cohen. 
So that's what I mean by doing that. You could also see you can change their position. So if he's a, I didn't see his face-offs, but if he's like a stud face-off guy, like if he's got 80 face-offs, which he doesn't, 61, um, I would switch him to a center because most of my centers only have about like 70, 75 face-off rating. Um, but yeah, guys, that's the end of this video. Hopefully this little tip helps you out. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what this Bob Cohen guy can do because uh, he looks like a uh, super stud. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the end of this. Hopefully more videos coming on later in the week. I got some time off, got some time to relax, sit down and make some videos. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you're excited for the, uh, for the return. Also, what you want to see in NHL 20. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Peace.